In this video, we're going to cover one topic, least squares line. Um, in, in this um, topic, least squares line, suppose we have a bunch of bivariate data that is fairly strongly correlated. In other words, it has a correlation coefficient that is near minus 1 or 1. This means that there's a linear relationship or a fairly linear relationship between the x and the y data. So we say we might have a data set here where we've got a whole bunch of bivariate data and we've got n values. Down here we show an, I show an example of the, the line uh, through that data and a scatter plot of that data. What we may want to do is find a line that represents that relationship between the x and y values of our data. And the equation for that line would be y is equal to bx plus a. The book uses b for the slope and a for the y-intercept of that line. So we'd like to find a line that, that um, represents that data. So this talks about how we might go about doing, you know, finding that line. Suppose there's, um, uh, for each independent value x, say x sub i, there's a distance that that point is from the line um, relative to the dependent value y, y sub i. So let's look at this first one here. We have a point that is not on the line and for x1 and the, the, line, the red line represents that distance from the line d1. We also have for x2 we have a, a similar distance from the point to the line. So we have a whole bunch of these. The, the line is not through the points exactly, so we have all of these d's that represent the error of this line through the data. So the, the, the values or the distances that those points are from the line represent the error in, in that representation. So to quantify the total error in that representation, we use what we call the squares error. And basically all it is is we square each of those error values and then sum them all up. So notice that we've got d1 squared plus d2 squared and so on all the way down to the end. So that, that term would represent a, a quantified value of the error for that line, um, the error for that line and the data that we are given. So what do we want to do? We want to minimize that squared error. So we would like that E value to be as small as possible. This uh, minimization is sometimes called the least squares error. Least meaning that we're trying to minimize the squares error term. So therefore we call it the least squares error. And the line that does that minimization we call the least squares line. Now the book has a derivation of these values, the A and the B values that, that minimize that error. But we'll just take those values that, that are given to us. The slope, <coughs> excuse me, B, is equal to our sample correlation coefficient times the sample standard deviation for y divided by the sample standard deviation for x. And the y-intercept a is equal to the mean of y minus b times the mean of x. So notice that we have to we would have to calculate the b value first, the, the slope, and then we can calculate using the means the a value or the y-intercept. Now because this is the least squares error values for that line, any other values for B and A will make that error value E larger. <coughs> and so these, these values will give us that minimum squares error or that least squares error. Now for the equation for R, well I'm, well, I'm sorry, for the equation for B, <coughs> we can simplify this a little bit. Notice that R we know is equal to the sample covariance divided by the <clears throat> the two sample standard deviations. 
So if we take that and plug it into our B equation, <coughs> we plug in that for R, we notice that here we have the, the equation for R, the covariance divided by the standard deviations. <coughs> and we're multiplying that times the standard deviation of Y over, st over the standard deviation of X. The standard deviations for Y <coughs> will cancel out and so a simplified version of B is just the sample covariance for X and Y divided by the sample variance for X. As an example, let's take some data that is near, nearly on a line and I generated some data the x, the x values are 1, 2, and 3, and the y values are 2, 3, and 7, correspondingly. So we have three values in this set of data, and we're going to calculate the least squares line for this data, or the line that minimizes the squares error. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is calculate the mean of x and the variance of x. So the mean we know is just going to be 2 and the variance we use that mean by and then we subtract that mean from all of our data and square it square each one and because we're doing the sample variance we divide by 2 and we end up with the sample variance for x equal to 1 the sample or the mean for y we just add up the y values and then divide by 3 and we get a mean of 4 for y. The sample covariance <coughs> for our x and y data, remember we just take the x value minus its mean times the y value minus its mean and then we sum up all those values for the data that we have. We have three values, so we get three values on top and we divide by 2 because we have three values and the bottom is n minus 1. That'll give us a covariance of five halves. So we take those values and pl now plug it in and find our slope. Remember the slope is the sample covariance divided by the sample variance for x. We had five halves and one, so that gives us a b value of five halves. For a, we need the mean of y that B value we just calculated in the mean of X. We plug those values in and we end up with minus one. So the least squares line for that data that we have up above is going to be equal to Y equals five halves X minus one. So that'll be the the line that minimizes that squares error. Now let's look at the squares error. Let's see if it's, see, we'll find out what that squares error value is and then we'll change the slope and see if it, the squares error actually gets bigger. Now in the equation for D, let's look at the first value, D1. In the equation we have Y1 minus Y1 star. The Y1 is the data that we have in our data set and the Y1 star is the actual value on the line. So the for the first point that we had, the actual y value was 2, and the corresponding y value on the line, we use the x value in the equation for our line. So we take that value, which was 1, put it into the equation for our line, and then subtract those. When we do that, we get 1 half for the first error. For the second error, we do the same thing, but using our second point. 3 was our data. 2 was the x value, plug those in, we get minus 1. Same thing for our third point, using the, the third point, we end up with a value of 1 half for that error. Now the total error, or the squares error, is going to be the square of d1 plus the square of d2 plus the square of d3. Square all those values that we just calculated and add them up, and we end up with a value of 1.5. Now, let's look at what happens if we change one of those values, one of the values that we calculated, A or B, and see if the error gets bigger. In this case, we're going to use change B to 2.
it was five halves. So now we're going to change it to a two and see what happens. The D1, we, we're using the same Y value that we have from our data, but the line value now we use the new slope two and calculate that using the X value and we end up with a value of one. So that increased a little bit. That error increased a little bit. Calculating the error for two, the second point, we're doing the same thing just with our different slope. The error we get there is zero. So it went down quite a bit actually from minus one to zero. Now let's look at the third value, D3. We end up with, after plugging in the points, we end up with a error of two. So it went up quite a bit. Calculating the total squares error, we square all those values individually and then sum them all up. One squared plus zero squared plus two squared. That gives us a value of five, which in fact is bigger than the previous value that we had, which was 1.5. And so the, the error went up because we weren't using the minimum or the least squares value for our A and B coefficients. Here's a plot of the actual data and the least squares line. I've got our three points. Here's one, two, and three. And then a plot of the line. The line has a slope of five halves and a y-intercept of minus one. The y-intercept value we, we don't really see on the plot because our plot only goes down to an x value of 1. Here's our final example. I generated just some random data that kind of followed a line and then I plotted two lines on, on, the, on the two different plots. One of them on the left, the line on the left is our best fit line or our least squares line and the one on the right is not. I just changed the slope and, and the y-intercept values. No, and for each of the points, I drew a little line, a vertical line, that represents the error for that particular point. And if you scan through the data there, you'll see that most of them are fairly small, like you know, at least on my screen, about a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> There's about one, two, three that are a little bit bigger. Now if we look at the line on the right, notice that these three values here, these three D values, actually got smaller compared to the ones over here, or roughly the same or smaller, but they're fairly small. However, notice that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values actually got quite a bit larger than what they were before. And so if we were end up, if we ended up squaring all of those and summing them up, we would see that the error total error on this side would be much bigger than the one on the left. And so the best fit line or the least squares line is the one that gives us the m minimum amount of error between the line and our data points.